Meghan makes a rare fashion faux pas a label is left hanging off her dress when she touches down in Tonga with Harry after staying at a lavish five-star Fijian private island following her security scare. The Duchess of Sussex made a minor fashion faux pas when she arrived in Tonga wearing a striking red dress. Meghan Markle still had the label hanging from her self-portrait dress as she walked along a red carpet to the sounds of local singers wearing grass skirts at Fuamatu Airport in Nuku'alofa, the country's capital. The dress, which mirrored the color of the Tongan flag, was accompanied by blue heels, with the Duchess holding hands with her husband Prince Harry following their 90-minute flight from Fiji. The royal couple were welcomed to the country by Her Royal Highness the Princess Angelica Latifupka, the only daughter and eldest child of King Tupu VI and Queen Nanazipo Utukua. Later they will be the guests of honor at another welcome reception and dinner in Nuku'alofa with the king and his wife, with traditional Tongan entertainment. The visit to Tonga comes after the royal couple unveiled a statue to a hero sergeant in Fiji after spending the night at a lavish five-star resort on one of the country's private islands. Prince Harry and wife Meghan flew in from the capital Suvatanadi, in the country's west, for the unveiling, as they continue their marathon 16-day royal tour. The couple had spent the night on the Paradise Isle of Vedavara together as they took a break from their jam-packed schedule. Security held back crowds which turned out to catch a glimpse of the pair in Nadi, after a security scare cut short Megan's visit to the overcrowded Suva market a day earlier. The royals were given a traditional welcome after stepping off their chartered flight on their last morning in Fiji before flying on to Tonga. Mother-to-be Meghan was wearing a forest green Jason Wu dress and cradled her baby bump as her husband gave a speech. The couple sat for the second time on their brief visit to Fiji on a raised dais for the welcome ceremony, during which Prince Harry again drank a cup of the national drink, kava, which is made from the roots of the pepper plant and has the appearance of muddy water. After the ceremony, the president of Fiji, Major General Jayoji Conrad, gave a short speech thanking the couple for their visit and congratulating them on the birth of their first child next year. Thank you for coming to Fiji and gracing us with your much welcome but very short visit. It's good to know that you promised to come back. May Almighty God be with you now and in the future, he said. In his speech, the Duke greeted his audience with the traditional beulah. Thank you to the people of Fiji for the warm welcome we have received during our visit. The Duchess and I are leaving with special memories of your beautiful country and look forward to returning in the future, he said. The couple were then invited to walk down to unveil the statue of Sergeant Talayasi Labalaba, a British Fijian soldier who died heroically in battle, which had been covered with a blue piece of velvet. Prince Harry pulled it off with a flourish and then posed for photographs as his wife watched proudly. Sergeant Talayasi Labalaba, a Fijian member of the elite British Special Air Service (SAS), single-handedly held off 250 attackers from taking an army base 46 years ago. Sergeant Talayasi Labalaba, a Fijian member of the elite British Special Air Service (SAS) single-handedly held off 250 attackers from taking an army base 46 years ago. Lab Alaba, renowned as one of the SAS's greatest heroes, gave his life in an epic struggle to defend his fellow soldiers at the Battle of Murbat, in what is now Yemen, in 1972. Lab Alaba and eight fellow SAS soldiers were stationed at a British Army training team house just outside the port of Murbat in Oman. For a year the crack unit had been on a secret assignment, codenamed Operation Jaguar, to protect the Sultan of Oman from an insurgent force, the People's Front for the Liberation of the Occupied Arab Gulf. On the morning of July 19, 1972, 250 of the front's best fighters stormed the port in a surprise attack that left the nine SAS men pinned down inside their fort. Lab Alaba, 30, knew that without heavier firepower, the unit faced almost certain annihilation. In a daring break, he sprinted across an exposed 800-yard stretch to reach a 25-pound field gun. The gun usually required three men to operate it and by the time he reached it Lab Alaba was soaked in blood from a bullet wound to his jaw. But the elite soldier, still under heavy fire, spun the cumbersome weapon to face the advancing guerrilla fighters and opened up from close range, decimating them. 
Ignoring his wounds he continued to hold off the 250 front fighters for six hours. Captain Mike Keeley and comrades Tommy Tobin and Sukina Otikevezai also ran the 800-yard gauntlet to try to save the courageous sergeant's life. They arrived too late, but Lab al had held off the guerrilla force long enough for the Sultan's strike master jets to arrive. The jets drove back the attackers while reinforcements from nearby Salala were organized. In SAS, Operation Storm, a book recounting the battle, fellow trooper Roger Cole wrote that the fight would surely have been lost had Lab al not taken the 25-pounder. The sergeant was posthumously awarded a mention in dispatches for his bravery, and his body was returned to England, where it was buried at St. Martin's Church in Hereford. A statue to the war hero was erected at the SAS headquarters outside the town in 2009. Lab al -Aba is an enduring legend among Fijians, 1,250 of whom are currently serving in the British Army. The soldier's son, Iai Adair Lab al -Aba, 53 was at the ceremony and spoke of his pride that Prince Harry would be unveiling his father's statue. I'm so excited, so happy today. I last saw him, my father, in 1971 when he left for his tour of duty. He was meant to come home again within days when he died. I was just four years and eleven months old, he said. He was a really family man, my father. I am very excited to meet Prince Harry. It is a great honor that he has agreed to do this. His comrade Sukina Otikevezai Wakalo, 75, was with Lab al -Aba when he died and was himself shot in the shoulder by a bullet that just missed his head. We were blood brothers, we stood side by side. It was the last day of our five-month tour, we had some rum to celebrate the night before and had packed our belongings and gone to sleep before the handover, he said. It was 4 a.m. when the attack started. We thought it would be just another skirmish and they would hear back into the mountains. But it wasn't and we were outnumbered. He added how we have campaigned for a long time for a statue to commemorate him. It is wonderful to have a memorial to him here in Fiji. It is very important to the Fijian people, he said. We were very proud to serve the crown so it means a lot to us to have Prince Harry here to unveil it. His brother Prince William unveiled a statue on Hereford in 2014. Tourism Minister Fayez Koya said of Harry and Meghan's trip to Fiji, We are proud to host them. This is a worldwide event so it is tremendous for us. They are a couple with global appeal to everyone. He confirmed that the newlyweds, who are expecting their first child in April, spent last night on the Paradise Isle of Vedavara together. This private island boasts it offers conscientious luxury to the discerning traveler and is one of the world's most beautiful places. It has three secluded and expansive seaside villas, meticulously crafted with natural textures and materials creating spacious and comfortably elegant environments. Vedavara is one of those islands you will not forget. It showcases the Fijian spirit and what we have as Fijian people. It's absolutely beautiful, stunning. They would have enjoyed themselves, Mr. Koya said. After the ceremony, the couple boarded their Qantas charter fight for the South Pacific nation of Tonga the third country they are visiting during their 16-day trip on behalf of the Queen. The royal couple are spending just one night in Tonga before heading back to Sydney, Australia for the closing ceremony of the Invictus Games. They will have two nights in Sydney and will then fly to New Zealand where their tour draws to a close.